I know I've been talking about the Chinese elm tree quite a bit lately, and partly because I've been seeing a lot of failures associated with this tree. A lot of it has to do with the drought. A lot of it has to do with things just being really hot. But there's also a disease that's attacking this tree that I seem to come across. So check out this next video and I think you'll see what I'm talking about. I've got a diseased Chinese elm tree, Almus parvifolia. Now this is a tree that I've been working on for probably 20 to 25 years. And I've known that its disease has been a problem, but it's suddenly gotten much, much worse. And what you can see here is lesions in the bark all the way up. And in some areas, it looks so, almost like a, like a target you know, sort of a, a round, you know, sort of an oblong, and it dries out. But the problem has gotten um, probably 10 times worse in the last three to four years. Now, I've done a lot of research on this, and, and, and a lot of the books uh, refer to anthracnose as being the problem. And anthracnose is typically a leaf disease, but can spread down into the wood. And a lot of the books that I've seen show very, very similar um, areas of dieback in the bark and referring it to uh, the uh, anthracnose as being the part of it. Uh, for a long time, I thought it was the nec nectria canker, and that's still a possibility. It could be a combination of problems. Now there's a bit of a, a, bit of a problem with this tree because these people like the shade that this tree provides, but it's starting to self-destruct. And recently, right up there, a big limb broke out and came out and it filled up this whole area. So what I'm looking at now, that part of the heavy, that tree is very heavy. This lower part is very heavy. The stuff that grows more or less straight up is probably good enough, but it's getting to a point where um, not only is it a brittle tree, but the weaknesses are causing the, the wood to fracture. There is one cable up in the tree, and I actually put that cable up there, gosh, I'm going to say probably 20 years ago. Let's, let's see if I can get a little closer to that. And as you can see, I showed the reason why I put the cable. There was a, a very prominent split. So I put those two sections of the tree together to keep that from getting worse, because the whole tree would have self-destructed but the location of the cable was the only place I could I could put it to keep this crotch nice and tight if I would have put it further out there would have been too much movement and this limb out here is now showing some signs of cracking underneath so what do we do in a case like this do I recommend to the client that we ought to just give up on the tree well age is also an issue here as a client gets older and older, they may not want to wait for a little tree to become a nice shade tree again. So I think what I'm going to recommend is that we just keep babying it and hoping for the best. But be sure to tell the client that the tree is on its way out and eventually it will succumb to this problem. But uh, I mean, that may, may be a few more years. Look at that crack through there. So there's lots of weaknesses everywhere. So all we have to do is keep it as light as possible. Um, but a big positive is, is nothing is hanging over the house. It's not even hanging over the driveway. So as limbs fail on this tree, the likelihood of serious damage resulting from these breaks is uh, negligible, unless of course somebody is under the tree when it happens. So that's gonna be my best recommendation in this case. Weight reduction out there, out there, out here and on this side um, but some of these branches even these small ones show real weak areas it's kind of a shame but such is the great circle of life everything goes back into the earth